When I teach classes on the American government, I not only cover the basics, I also emphasize the student's role in the function of the United States, civics and citizenship. I increasingly find that students do not see themselves as part of the political system. It's viewed as an external thing in which they have little control. In class discussions and while reading papers, I encounter the same things. Politicians are distant. Political parties do not represent what they believe and care about. The media in well-connected shape everything. It's not just in the classroom. Over the years, I find these sentiments everywhere. Politics itself is seen as a bad word in their eyes. My conclusion is that our democracy has lost its vitality. And as a student of history and politics, I find that disturbing. And I think you should too. I believe that to reverse this trend, we need to build our democracies back up from the bottom, from our local communities upwards. Let's take a look at how we got here and why we have this problem. Democracy is an ancient innovation, but it's an innovation that requires constant attention and renewal. What democracy means has evolved over time, from the ancient Greeks to the Enlightenment philosophers to the American patriots and beyond. We can expect it to change with the times and in response to the challenges of each generation. Democracy works on the premise that the people, citizens, can rule themselves. It's the idea of self-government, equality, individual rights, and the rule of law. It was and is a revolutionary idea to say that we have no permanent ruling class, no aristocracy, that we can have a government that ultimately answers to the people and no other source for its legitimacy. The problem in America that I see is that our democracy requires vigilance. The hard-won rights and privileges in a democracy wither on the vine if they are not exercised. Those rights and freedoms we cherish were not easily attained, and make no mistake, they can be lost. The problem in America that I see is a coming crisis in our democratic political system. It is a crisis of its very legitimacy. There have been some warning signs for those of us who have taken notice. For example, over the past few years, public opinion polls consistently show low approval ratings for the elected branches of government, the parts in which we, the people, have the most control. A case in point, trust in Congress, the House of Representatives and Senate, is abysmal. As we can see in this chart from Gallup, confidence in Congress has fallen dramatically over the past few decades, from 40-plus percent in the 1970s and 80s, down to 7% recently. There's not a lot of trust there. Do you trust them? According to a recent study in the Journal of Democracy, analyzing data meticulously collected from world value surveys, democracy itself has lost its luster. As you can see in these two graphs from the publication, democracy does not rank as highly amongst people's opinions of what's essential or even preferable for a functioning government. The researchers found a negative trend overall, which was even more drastic among younger generations, especially those described as millennials, most of my students. Let's have a look at why this is. So now for a little bit of social science from the professor. Political socialization is a process by which we gain our political ideas. Like most learning, it's more pronounced during childhood, our formative years, and continues to a lesser extent throughout our lives. Our ideas of politics and government are partially the result of our shared experiences. As of late, these have been experiences of increased partisanship, economic angst, political scandals, and the ineffectiveness of our democratic institutions to solve 21st century problems. Younger generations, and millennials especially, have not seen the promised benefit of democracy to improve things. They also have not experienced the consequences of the alternatives to democracy, as previous generations have. They don't remember the fight against fascism, the civil rights struggles, or the Cold War. I don't remember some of these either, so I understand the disconnect. Those in the rising generation were not the ones to fight for these hard-won rights. 
The political system in the United States has had a high level of stability and acceptance over time. But because of this changing generational perspective and the shift in shared experiences, it appears that the stability is eroding. The people are becoming disengaged and more dissatisfied. It's not an issue of apathy or unconcern with politics. Citizens are increasingly feeling alienated from the process. As I've experienced with my students, they feel that democracy itself is out of their control. Guess what? Because of this same distrust and disengagement, that is exactly what's happening. You may ask, what happens when people lose faith in good democratic institutions and do not participate? Someone else fills the void. We give up our power to those willing to take part. A 2014 article published in the academic journal Perspectives of Politics analyzed the nature of our democracy to test what kind of political system we currently have, to apply theories to reality, as academics do. Their conclusion was that the American political system is best described by the theories of economic elite domination and biased pluralism. In simpler terms, the researchers stated that our country is controlled by the wealthy and well-connected and by special interest groups. This means that the United States is not functionally a democracy run by the majority of people anymore, but an oligarchy ruled by a select few. America looks more like an aristocracy than a democracy. Let me explain why that is. First off, there's nothing inherently sinister going on here. The so-called elites or special interests, those exercising power, have gained power by simply being involved when others are not. Why wouldn't they? Being involved in a political system works to their benefit as it would for anyone. This is simple competition, but with less players in the game, it has become more lopsided. One thing to note, this goes beyond voting. Voting is a moment in time when participation by the majority is more likely to happen. As I explained to my students, there's a lot more to participation in a democracy than voting. While I believe voting rates could be higher, it's not the real problem here. It's what happens in between elections that shapes policy in the future. Some have used this space to gain advantage over the rest of us by default. This is the root cause of our current oligarchy. This should be the focus in the quest to renew our democracy. We have to break the false assumption that our system works from the top down, that economic elites or special interests naturally hold the real power. By giving into this false idea, we are creating a self-fulfilling prophecy that brings about even more frustration and less trust in our democracy. We are ceding more power to the powerful. For maximum benefit, power can and should be exercised from the bottom up. The people, in younger generations specifically, have the power of numbers. They can shape the future. I'm sure that they've heard this before, but did not know where to put their energies. Social media memes focusing on national politicians is not the answer here. The answer is more practical involvement in the process. My idea is that we start at the lowest level, community democracy. Community democracy refers to the simple governmental actions happening all of the time at the local level. These are usually face-to-face -face interactions, solving all kinds of problems in our community, often using things like common sense and simple math. A great feature of the federal system in the United States is that it's diffuse, spread out. There's one national government, but also 50 state governments, and thousands of other local and municipal governing units, including things like city councils and school boards. While the national government seems to get all the attention, and tends to cause a good portion of our dissatisfaction, we the people have a statistically minuscule effect on it compared to what happens in our own communities. We are unlikely to see results at such a high level. Why focus on areas where we have little control? Let's focus our energy on where we can make a difference that we can see and feel in our communities all around us. Those who are involved locally will attest to this. Unfortunately, that population skews towards older citizens, the rising generation has not been involved at this level as it should. The fact is, local governments have more of a direct effect on your everyday life. Your schools, your streets, 
taxes and local ordinances that you encounter all the time are set by these institutions. Our voice is very significant, both during local elections, which do not see as much participation as their national counterparts, and in between, when the real work of self-government takes place. Participation of any kind at the local and community level makes quite a bit of difference. Attending board meetings, candidate gatherings, and community events, like this one, or simply having conversations about local concerns can and does make a difference. I've seen it happen. For example, when we have hosted local political events here on campus, even during the heat of an election, the conversations were civil, people had access to the candidates directly, and the issues discussed weren't based on the positions of political teams, but on issues that concerned everybody in the room. Historically speaking, movements and change come from the bottom up. My proposal fits this trend. I see this idea as civics from below. Faith in democratic institutions of all sizes can be gained by increased engagement where it matters, building back confidence in our democratic practice and filtering that progress upwards towards the national level. We need a simple change in focus, a recalibration of energies to where it counts more and frustrates less. I challenge everyone, the young and the not so young, to get involved in about an issue or proposal and act locally. Use your social media skills to find out what's going on around you and get involved. Practice democracy in your own community. Show up to meetings, meet with local candidates, find others who agree with you and organize. Fight for what you believe in. Question decision makers directly and encourage others to participate. As we have seen, if we are not using our hard-won rights, someone else will in our place. Once we are engaged again, our combined impact can reverse the dominance of a few that we have witnessed. Let's begin at the bottom and use the system as it's always been intended. It's your democracy. Fight for it. Thank you.